Hey everybody, welcome to G4G here on YouTube. Today we're in the World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth beta on the last night that it is live. And for the topic of this video, I just wanted to go ahead and discuss where I think the game could potentially fall in terms of its strengths as an expansion. You know, basically I'm going to give a rank of how I feel Vanilla WoW and the other expansions have gone. And where I think Biffa is going to kind of lay along that scale. In my mind, I tend to think of World of Warcraft similar to blocks within Magic the Gathering. Although blocks in MTG tend to occur in threes, I think more of WoW is kind of occurring in twos. So to me, the first block is clearly Vanilla WoW and TBC together. There is a reason why I definitely lump them together, is because both of them had some pretty similar mechanics. They were the early parts of WoW, and a lot of things about the game were just simply the same. You had things like uh, tanks working very hard for their threat, certain DPS classes like Warlocks and Cats could rip threat, in TBC, when Paladins were introduced, if you silenced them, they were absolutely useless. Uh, you could drain a prop Pally's mana, and just like being silenced, he would be completely useless. If a tank was feared, uh, 9 times out of 10, of course, they would lose aggro. We still had things like the resistance gears making uh, a definite appearance like fire gear for Anixia, shadow gear within BWL, nature gear within the AQs, and then you come into TBC, and Hydros definitely required uh, poison resist and frost resist gear. Later on in Black Temple, shadow gear came back. Uh, and yes, even into Wrath it existed a little bit, but beyond Nax and a little bit with Hodir and Oldar, our Olduar, things were pretty much done with resistances at that point. So to me, the way that I see it is that Vanilla and TBC were a block, Wrath and Kata were a block, and uh, Mop and Legion, excuse me, Mop and Wad were definitely a block, and now we're going to have Legion and Biffa. I will say that I think it is logical, and you could certainly make a case that the first two blocks I listed certainly make sense, Vanilla, TBC, Wrath, and Kata, and you could actually throw Mop as an island unto itself, and then lump Wad, Legion, and Biffa all together, and kind of call that Modern WoW, uh, Vanilla, and TBC it could be called Classic WoW, and... Wrath and Cataclysm could kind of be called middle or transitional. In terms of where I rank the expansions, uh, I'll go ahead and jump into that now. Wad and Mop are very close to last place for me. It's, it's sort of hard for me to give a true official rating on there because Miss of Pandaria was an absolutely trash expansion for me. Uh, and my guild at the time. We happened to go through a lot of inner turmoil because we had brought on board a large group of people that had been together outside of WoW for a long, long time, and they introduced a harder core aesthetic to the guild than we'd previously been doing, and it sometimes clashed with who we were as a guild dating back to Vanilla. Uh, my guild has been around since the very end of 2004, and our charter actually is 2005. So, hey, we have found a Leet Undead Bone Dino over here. It's got more hit points than me, and you know damn well I'm going to go in there and try and kill him. Uh, there's probably going to be a quest for him at some point, but let's go ahead and do it. Pop Barkskin early. So, ooh, actually, this guy maybe hurts a little bit. Hmm. Don't know what the Ravage did. I don't seem to have a debuff. That Roar didn't seem to do anything either. Okay, so. Back to what we were talking about. 
Uh, me, personally, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with this, I'm going to rank Mists of Pandaria, for me, as the worst expansion. Uh, the newer Eastern aesthetic got old pretty quickly. Unfortunately for me, I leveled several times to max pretty much before I had actually leveled to max in live. I hit max during the beta. Uh, my girlfriend got in late, so I sort of backed up and uh, helped her character get up to max level. So it had already been like max level and a half once. The game went live, I hit max level, then I was like dual boxing her account for a little while. So again, max and a half level. And just after a while, all of the stuff about Mr. Pandaria for me, unfortunately, just got old. Some of the rating was definitely good, but Throne of Thunder uh, definitely wore on for me. And it seemed like we just had a very, very long time between when that expansion started and when it ended. And it was just kind of over it by the time it ended. So if Mop is last place, clearly Warlords of Draenor is going to be right above it and just slightly. Now I know a lot of people are going to put Warlords of Draenor at the absolute bottom and that is certainly uh, a definite thing. You had the fact that you were in garrisons kind of isolating you from the rest of the world which actually wasn't too big of a deal for me. I didn't mind that too much. Um, not being like antisocial or anything it's just was like it was okay with me uh to be in my garrison i found there was a lot of stuff to do and i found it was a decent staging area for the environment at the time but the inconsistencies blizzard had with is there going to be flying is there not going to be flying i am one of those people who absolutely likes flying and definitely wants to get it in an expansion as soon as i possibly can just to make things a little bit easier. Of course, in Warlords of Draenor, that was an issue. I kind of like the alternate ta the alternative timeline for things, and it was interesting visiting like a Nagrand 2.0. Uh, well, yep, there it is. Go defeat Uruk. I should learn by now that any time I see a dude like that out in the wild, I'm probably going to have a quest for him two seconds after I kill him. But hey, that's okay. I already know that I can kill him now for this quest. So Warlords, again, was a little bit of what is... Wow, these are interesting things. A bunch of tick larvae are just flowing out of the cave. Uh, Warlords, again, was a little bit of an issue for the guild. Several weird life things happened to um, core raiders at the time. And uh, we wound up, this was the only expansion, that infected direhorn is on the move. It was the only expansion that we did not raid clear through to the actual end of the expansion. We wound up uh, leaving the game a little bit early. And that had been unheard of for us, even dating back to vanilla. So after Mists and Warlords, I would actually rank TBC as fairly low on the list. The reason being is because it, it, it still had so much of the classic uh, aesthetic going on when it came to World of Warcraft. TBC was only a minor hop above vanilla. Of course, you did have flying in that entire expansion, which was really, really cool. I have played a druid since vanilla. Druids could fly at 68 in TBC, so we got flying uh, two levels early. Some of the Netherwing dailies were able to be cheesed by being a Druid if I wore the Swift Flight Charm. It was very easy to beat those races that you had to do uh, for the Netherwing dailies and Netherwing rep and everything. So being a Druid in TBC was fun, but there was still a lot of just obnoxious elements in vanilla and tbc that are gone today like hit cap and expertise and is it spirit versus mp5 and it's just a lot of stuff that was still around in tbc plus 
some of the dungeons were some of the most obnoxious ones at the time. Shattered Halls, I absolutely hate. Um, the instance with uh, Murmur at the end of it, which was a name something like Shattered Halls. I, I don't honestly remember it. It's one of the Akadun ones. There was another annoying one. And then you had things like uh, all the Tempest Keep related instances were a giant pain in the ass too. So, yeah, there were definitely some problems that still existed in TBC that were just super, super obnoxious. And it's really good not to have to think about some of that stuff anymore. So, out of that, the next one that I would rank as low would be Cataclysm. Now, I consider Cataclysm and Wrath of the Lich King my favorite block when it comes to uh, when it comes to World of Warcraft. Wrath and Cata for me were some of the most fun times that I had. It's where we as a guild really hit our stride rating. I got introduced to a lot of people that are still my friends and mean more to me than just friends and everything like that. So it was a very, very good time period for me. I had a lot of fun with my guild. Our rating and our social nature was uh, a perfectly good mix. And I just actually liked the content. I mean, you there is that slam that exists out there in the world, but it's really gone down at this point. But there were the comments called Wrath Babies. And these were uh, people who basically just were like, oh, hey, you know, the only thing that you know of WoW is this kind of post-Wrath of the Lich King set up over here where things got easy, tanking was easy, and resistance gear went away, and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I still think Wrath was just an amazing expansion, and Kata, to me, was just a very logical extension of it. However... Kata lacked some of the things that Wrath had, and that was mainly a really good and proper build-up to the final villain. Arthas was built up perfectly throughout the expansion and menaced you at several different turns, whereas Deathwing, other than, you know, occasionally bombarding your zone, Deathwing didn't really haunt you the entire expansion the expansion the way Arthas did and of course you had the infamous Kata revamp which completely reworked the world and is probably responsible for any you know a great majority of the thoughts out there as to hey um, we want vanilla wow back like we want a vanilla server and Cataclysm introduces a major component of that want by just reworking the world's geography. So after Cataclysm, I would say the next best expansion is going to be Legion. Legion is probably the second best expansion they've ever done in this game, strictly because I finally believe they understood everything that they did wrong within Warlords of Draenor and Miss the Pandaria. They kept you going until the end of the expansion with raids and dungeons. We had, uh, we didn't get lots of dungeons when it came to uh, our expanded content. We would only get one in a clip. And I will say that honestly, the Seat of the Triumvirate is a little bit forgettable. The dungeon that is in the Tomb of Sargeras is not particularly too bad, but it certainly does not compare to some of the expansion within expansion uh, related dungeons that we've got. And we'll, we'll be talking about that more in just a moment. So Legion, you know, is really good, but it, it was not exactly without its flaws top raiding guilds had to deal with the fact that people had to go out and farm for artifact power just to do well in raids and mythic raids. Of course, Legion did give us the mythic system with that sort of 
interesting. Um, where is this? This dino is maybe in the ground or something. He seems to be right here. I'm supposedly on top of him, and yet I'm not. Oh, wow, there's... Huh. I have two elite, elites hanging around over me. I have this flying pterodax, and I have Overlord Shugvoth down there. I think they're going to be for quests because they're not starred on the map. So I'm going to perhaps wait to kill them. So Legion, you know, definitely a good expansion. The artifact weapons were interesting. You know, we still had sets in this expansion, everything. Um, I think it was definitely a fun expansion. I enjoyed playing a little bit of the beta, and I made sure not to burn myself out on it and make the mistake that I did in Miss Pandaria. Although I did like the World of Draenor beta, too, was in that one and play that one relatively uh, extensively, and I avoided burnout there. So that pretty much leaves Wrath of Lich King as the best expansion that World of Warcraft has ever done, and I would say that is about as common a pick as people saying Final Fantasy VII is their Final Fantasy. To me, I would make a strong case that X is my fi uh, favorite Final Fantasy, but Seven's definitely up there. Wrath of the Lich King just changed so much of what we have now and well, and I think a lot of the changes were made for good. You had the LFG system popping up, the expansive content within the expansion introduced the Twilight uh, Dungeons, the Hour of Twilight, excuse me, not the Hour of Twilight, the uh, ICC one, so we got three of them. We had a little cast-off raid there in uh, having to defeat Halion. Yes, he was a one-boss raid. But we still had a whole other instance to go into and do on normal and uh, do on heroic and everything like that and deal with those amazing cutters. But Wrath just seemed to get it right. You could say and a lot of purists will probably back this up, that Wrath dumbed a lot of things down, but a lot of the quality of life things that occurred in Wrath of the Lich King are still present today and are just simply good. It's hard to beat the fact that Wrath of the Lich King just changed the face of World of Warcraft for the player, whereas Cataclysm changed the land, Wrath just kind of changed the whole experience. And I truly do believe it is for the better. However, both Wrath and Kata certainly introduced a need for the purists to go back and have a home that they're really happy with. And I wouldn't deny them that. People tried to find it outside of World of Warcraft in doing things like uh, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, and things like, of course, uh, Wildstar was definitely a big one. Wildstar was touted as... Oh, it's the return to Vanilla WoW. It's going to be hard again, and, and quests are going to be difficult and everything. And it actually just turned out to be kind of an obnoxious game for a lot of people. People mathed out what it took to get your gear maxed out and everything like that. And it just took way, way too long. And people got over Wildstar quicker than was projected. We do have vanilla WoW servers coming out at some point, and honestly, I'm glad for people that it is, because it gives them something to go back to, and maybe they will realize some of what they think about vanilla WoW is definitely rose-colored glasses. I wouldn't mind visiting vanilla WoW, but I would say it isn't a place that I want to live, and too much of what I want to visit in vanilla WoW Things like a uncorrupted sunken temple and what it's like to do Mordon start to finish again. Going in the purple, going in a, the orange zone and end up in the purple zone over the falls and everything. It would be nice to relive some of those things, but to get there, you have to level. And you have to level through Vanilla Wow's leveling slog which is awful and was legitimately broken around 48 to 52 
and I just don't have the heart to do that anymore. If I had a 60 that I could just run around and revisit a couple things, I'd do it. So where is Battle for Azeroth going to fall in in all of this? How's it going to compare to the crappier ones like Miss and Warlords or the really good ones like Wrath of Legion? To be honest, I think it's probably going to fall behind Wrath and Legion, although just a tiny bit behind Legion so far. As you can see, I'm 115 here in the beta, so I've proceeded halfway through the leveling experience. I've done all of Zoldazar and have made a little bit of a foothold in Nazmir, um, and I also have the two things that I've set up in Kul Tiras. I have the uh, Drustvar base, no, the Stormsong Valley base, and I think the Tiergard Sound base. So far, I've done two of them. I think much like Magic the Gathering, Battle for Azeroth is going to sit firmly within Legion's block. I think not a lot is really going to change from Battle for Azeroth and Legion. I think they're going to be very, very similar expansions. To me, I might have a little bit of a harder time in Biffa thanks to its certain mop aesthetic in certain areas that are very troll, very mogu. Um, they're bringing back a lot of the same mobs and even architecture. And I'm just kind of ridiculously sick of Missa Pandaria. So when I see things that are close to it, I immediately get my hackles up because I hated that expansion so much. Barring that, Biffa is going to seem fun from what I've seen. I mean, hey... It's another expansion, so it's just new content. And even though I'm halfway through it, I don't feel burnt out. I feel I've hit that good middle ground of, I know the expansion well, but I haven't been in every nook and corner to the fact that, like, ugh, I just don't want to do it again. I did all the way through the Wrath beta, and I had a Death Knight that I raised up from, you know, 58. My Druid was in there, did dungeons, I did raids. And I never got tired of Wrath of the Lich King. If I was doing that new leveling block where Vanilla and TBC are in a block and Wrath and Cat are in a block, I would definitely pick Vanilla WoW and I would pick Wrath. I would skip Warlords and Mop as much as I could and go into Legion and Biffa. And I would skip TBC as much as I can. I really don't like TBC time walks when they come up, mostly because Shattered Halls is one of the dungeon. Shadow Labs is the other dungeon that I really hate. And uh, the Mechanar <laughs> is another one, you know, with the Autobot Energon cubes in there. That was, they were just, to me, TBC just had a lot of super trash dungeons that were just really obnoxious. And I hate even hitting them in time walking today. When it comes to the Wrath Time Walks, I like all of them. I like to participate in all of them. When it comes to the Mop ones, I hate Cricket Tree. Really, really, really over Cricket Tree at this point in time. Um, so we'll see what happens. Of course, now uh, we might have Warlords Time Walking in Biffa, and that could be really interesting if we start having... Warlord Dungeons there, but I think so far I'm going to rate Biffa um, slightly tied to second place. Wrath number one, Legion number two, and Biffa right on Legion's coattails. It may even overtake it if they learn from the small mistakes that they've made in Legion. So there you go, guys. That is what I'm thinking is going to happen for Battle of Azeroth. Uh, one thing that I can recommend for you guys, since this is going to be live tomorrow or later today, depending on when you view this video, it is recommended to bump up your rewards that you go war mode as you are leveling because these beginning few zones, you're not really going to run into the opposite faction too much. Horde has the Zandalar content pretty locked down and Alliance has the Kul Tiras area pretty locked down. It's only when you start getting around 119 that you really start transferring 
over and could most definitely run into uh, members of the other faction. <laughs> ha! It's no longer Darnassus. It's now the remains of Darnassus. Sorry about that there, Night Elves. Anyway, that's, uh, that's my opinion on where Battle for Azeroth is going to fall. If you've watched so far through this video, let me know where you guys think Battle for Azeroth is going to fall. And let me know if you disagree with how I've ranked the other expansions. I certainly can see a fight between Warlords and Mop as the worst expansion. Or people might rank Mop a little bit higher and have TBC and Warlords fight for the last expansion. But I definitely think Wrath and Legion uh, are going to take the top. For most people and uh, I think Wrath will beat out Legion a good 95% of the time. So there you go guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys on the WoW Battlefield 6 o'clock Eastern for Battle for Azeroth. Peace out everybody.